there was actually even a sex scene and there are no conjugal visits there. So a little sneaky, sneaky little scene in there for you that you're like, yeah. Hi, my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back. Today we are talking about a show called Prisoner's Wives, which is different from the Prison Wives Club, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago and then I reviewed reviews of the show. I reacted to reviews of the show. This is a different show. It's a British drama. So it was scripted, there was a cast. Well, I'll tell you my thoughts in a second. But if you're interested in my review of that show, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best of this really painful, hopefully one-shot deal. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I reviewed the show Prison Wives Club. It was a reality show that was based here in the United States out of Washington State, and it was cut off midway through the first season because people had a bad reaction to it. You can watch those videos, I'll post it in the end screen, but there were mixed reviews about it. In the comments of that video, a few people asked me to review the show Prisoner's Wives. It's a British drama that originally aired on BBC One, which is a British channel, between 2012 and 2014, I believe. There were two seasons, they call them series. Season or series one was six episodes and season or series two was four episodes. So in total, it was 10 episodes. You can find them all for free on YouTube. The series centers on four very different women, each struggling with a significant man in her life in prison. Now for all of my British beauty babes. This means really not much to me. I don't know where it is. The show is set in Sheffield, South Yorkshire. On their little marketing picture, the slogan said, behind every prisoner, there's a wife, girlfriend, or a mother doing time on the outside. For some, it's a nightmare. For others, a liberation. Prisoners wise, it's time to tell their stories. This was incredible. It was kind of somewhere between Days of Our Lives meets Prison Wives. It was like a soap opera. It was such a good drama. It drew you in. Some reviews said the series started out slow and they didn't like the first couple of episodes, but then progressively they got better. I beg to differ. From the minute I turned this show on, I was hooked. This is so embarrassing to admit. There are about 57 minute episodes and there's no commercials or anything on YouTube. You can watch them straight through. I could not watch this in double time or even time and a half. You could fast forward on YouTube and that's how I got through the Prison Wives Club. But on this one for me personally, because of their British accents and there are some phrases, some slang that they use that I don't understand. So I wasn't able to fast forward it, but I didn't want to. I wanted to treasure every minute of this. This show was so incredible. It's so embarrassing to admit I watched all 10 episodes in a day and a half, literally. I started it in the afternoon on Wednesday, watched throughout the night as I was doing things, mindless things like chopping vegetables, washing dishes, laying under the fan because it has been so hot. And then finally I was like, Oh man, it's over. Incredible, but also kind of disappointing. But I did it to myself. I watched 10 episodes, 10 hours of this show in a day and a half. That's how good it was though. What I loved about this show was that it showed every aspect of a prisoner's significant female in their life, what goes on in our lives. Real struggles, different struggles, different types of people, different ages. Some had children, some did not have children. One woman was pregnant. Things that we can get caught up in, a few different things that we could get caught up in, things that are unexpected, people who are very naive. It showed so many aspects of the journey. It also showed a lot of visit, but it wasn't all just visit. It wasn't like life just centered around the visiting room where you're kind of like, all right, come on, this is it. You know, because there's not that much excitement in the visit room, but after visit, so it was visit every week and you would see things happening in the visit room and how they were interacting with one another and exchanging information that you can't talk about on the phone, stuff like that. And then it showed their lives afterwards and it got really in depth in their lives. The editing quality, 
everything of this show was incredible. It was a real drama, a very high budget. The story was well written. They were weaved into one another incredibly. I loved every second of this. Yes, because of where I am with my life, I understood a lot of it. Because it's overseas, all of the rules aren't the same, but a lot of them were the same. So we understood things like him getting in trouble for a cell phone being taken away. There was actually even a sex scene and there are no conjugal visits there. So a little sneaky, sneaky little scene in there for you that you're like, yeah. So I'll tell you about the main characters really quick and who they are and a little bit about them. So you can judge if you wanna watch, you wanna watch by the way, side note, but I won't give you too much detail because I don't wanna give away the show for you. And then in the future, if you guys want, I can take some scenarios so I can use it to explain things to you guys, things that happen to us, things that we go through, things that I was able to see because I live this every day. So let me know if you want that, but I won't do that in this video because I don't wanna ruin the show for anybody that really wants to watch it. The first character that opens up the show is a woman, a young woman named Gemma. She's pregnant, her husband's name is Steve. They, so she thinks, live a straight and narrow life. He owns a business, this and that. And then the cops come in and they raid everything and learns what it's like to be engrossed in this life, to be thrown into it. She claims his innocence and she's naive until she can't be anymore. And then she shows a strength and a side of her that you're like, wow, okay. Did you know you had that in you? And then she kind of takes a turn for something that we'd all be like, girl, we don't do that in this life. And then you guys will see, but she's a beautiful girl, great actress. All of the actors were incredible. So it's Gemma and Steve are that couple, the naive young couple where she's naive and he was lying to her and hiding things from her. And she genuinely had no clue. Then you had Francesca. She's that typical mob wife persona, fancy car, huge house, dripping head to toe in designer, hair done and highlighted. She has this air about her. She has this arrogance about her. She's a sweet woman and they all call each other love. <laughs> Side note, for two days after I watched the show, I was thinking I could hear my thoughts in a British accent and I called everybody love more than I already do. I freaking loved every second of the show. But she is probably my favorite character. They're probably my favorite couple. He's a bit of an ass, but they go very, very well together. She shows us how it's very easy to get trapped up in this lifestyle. And once you take a step into it, once you take a step too far, it could be a very slippery slope. An avalanche can happen at the end. They have two children, a daughter, Lauren, and a son named Matt. They're both high school age. Matt's older. He gets himself in a little bit of trouble and Lauren's naive. She doesn't really want to have anything to do with this life. And it shows a real life struggle. Oh, also Francesca's dad is in this a lot. He does not approve of her life. He knows of it, but he doesn't approve of it. She kind of gets him in a little bit of trouble. Really good storyline. One of my favorite storylines of the show. This first season, you also have a woman who they call Lou. Her name is Louisa. She's from a not as good area of town. She has a son, his name is Mason. She lives for her son. She does everything for her son. She's such a good mom. Her husband's inside, I can't remember his name. She still has one foot on the street because she's kind of tied to the street, being manipulated and kind of controlled by this drug dealer. She's got half a foot still in that old life. She's lying to her husband about doing that. She's lying to her son about where her father is. And and she's just trying so hard to keep everything evenly keeled and it's all falling out from under her feet. But she just keeps saying, if we could just get through these next couple of weeks, because I think at this point, her husband only has a couple of weeks left, but she messes up big time and she's not in season two because of what happened to her. And you'll see that. They're all really good actors. She has a really good, really relatable storyline. The next character who we meet in season one is this really in dearing woman. She's a little bit older, probably maybe in her early 50s. And her name is Harriet. Her son's inside of prison. She is the most naive of the bunch. She's kind of a little bit of comic relief because she's so naive that she's hysterical. She does things that are just woof off the wall. She's got this really nervous, anxious, good girl to a fault personality where she's so nervous and she tries to make everything perfect. And she's just kind of, she's comical. She's funny, but 
her situation is not funny. Her son was kind of a loner, has mental health issues. He blames her for everything. She gets trapped in a scandal because he's manipulating her into doing things that she would never do ever in a million years. She didn't even know how to do. She had to go into the inner city. She had to meet with some people that were sketchy. And it just is a really good display of how a mother could be manipulated because of guilt by her son who's on the inside. She also develops a relationship with somebody who works inside. That whole thing evolves between series or season one and two. Ooh, it's a really, really good storyline. She still remains pretty naive and pretty innocent, but at the end, she does put her foot down to her son and you're like, you go girl, poor thing poor little mama girl, but you go girl. Lou and Gemma do not come back for season two. You'll know why when you watch the series. So they introduced two new characters in series or season two. There's a girl named Aisling or Ashling. Sometimes I thought they were saying Ashley, so I think it's Ashling. It's spelled A-I-S-L-I-N-G, but I think they were pronouncing it Ashling. Her father is on the inside. And her father, Brandon, is a little bit older, probably in his 50s too. He's been in and out her whole entire life. He's an associate and a friend of Paul. Francesca, the mob wife, her husband. I say friend in air quotes because you know me, I always overuse air quotes and it's so embarrassing, but I'm saying friend like that because later in the season or series, can I just say one or the other and not have to correct myself every time? No, because I'm annoying. Later on, he realizes that he's been used and he's not really his friend whatsoever and he calls him out on it, but it's kind of this cold, harsh reality that dawns on him that he doesn't have anybody or any friends because of his criminal lifestyle and being in and out of prison and he feels so bad because his daughter's like, this is your last chance, dad. And something really dramatic, really dramatic happens between the two of them. She's also really good friends with Francesca and Paul's son, Matt and something happens between the two of them at the end of season two. That was a really good storyline that played out during all this as well. The other couple that was new and introduced in season two, Kim and her husband, who right now I can't remember his name, Nick maybe, something like that. It's that age old story of a man who is accused of being an SO, if you don't know what that means. It's the harshest thing you can accuse a man of. And a lot of people do that to get somebody in trouble because they know that's all they have to say to get him there. Read between the lines. I know you're smart enough to figure it out. I can't say it without getting this video pulled down or demonetized. They're a really good storyline because first of all, that's something that people struggle with all the time. But also before all this, she was having an affair. And if she came out about that affair, that could prove that he was innocent. And so there's a lot of drama around that and a lot of drama surrounding if she's going to say it or if she's going to let the lawyer say it and then he does wind up getting off and when he does get off then they're left with this relationship that they have to decide are we going to fix this can we fix this can he move on from this after everything or are we done what i love about this is that they cover every, basically every facet that we could go through from that SO charge that happens to so many people who are living the prison wife life and have to support somebody on the inside who's innocent, who has these accusations made towards him by some sort of salty person or an ex that wants to stick it to him or get back at him for something, all the way to the naive mom. And then somebody in all of this turns around and rats and becomes an informant. I'm not gonna tell you which character, it's gonna ruin it. And that person gets themselves in a really dangerous situation where their life was at risk and they almost lost it because of getting involved in all that and being lied to by the police. Police were making promises to them that they didn't really care to even want to keep. They just wanted to close the case. That reminds me, there are a couple of characters in season two that I should tell you guys about. There's a man named Ian, who's the prison chaplain who plays a big role in this. And then also there's a woman, they call her Fontaine, which is her last name. She's what in America we would call a detective or a lead detective. I don't remember what they call them there because they don't have the same names for lawyers. I can't even remember what they were calling lawyers. They just have different terminology for things, but we obviously can figure it out because because we live this lifestyle. So the show is incredibly good. I will say it ended a little abruptly. You have all of your questions answered. You also are left wanting so much more. I don't know if it was meant to be a short series. I don't know if it was pulled midway. I looked on Wikipedia, it didn't really say. A lot of you guys were saying for Prison Wives Club, you're like, oh, I don't even wanna get into it because I don't wanna start something I can't finish. This is one 
you want to start it and you want to finish it. You're going to want more, but at the same time, you need to watch it. I decided that I was going to make a rating scale for myself because that's fun. And you've asked me to review so many shows and I will continue to do this. We all need something to watch and this is something we could so relate to. And there was a point where during all this, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I watching another prison wife show? I know what happens. I live this every day. This is the days of my own life. But the thing is, why would you watch a soap opera? It's drama that you know about. It's housewife smut, right? This is prison wife. It's not smut, but it's so good. If anybody needs to watch the show, it's a prison wife because you're gonna love it. So my new rating scale is going to be Roro Tomatoes. Oh yes, oh yes. Make fun of me all you want. I'm adorable, okay? Okay. So on a scale of one to five, this has five stars, five tomatoes, five pieces of popcorn. I don't know, okay? I'm not really a critic. But this definitely has, across the board, five stars, a full container of popcorn. It was incredible. I didn't rate Prison Wives Club because I didn't have a rating scale, but I would, compared to this, I would give that a two and a half. This is off the charts. It's like a five and a half out of five. So good. Go watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sorry I didn't give you too many details, but I don't want to. I want you to watch this because it's so worth it. If you want to watch my videos that I did on Prison Wives Club, that is my first one, the review. There is my reaction to the online reviews about it. If you're not already subscribed, you need to subscribe for this red lip alone. Come on, isn't it hot? You could do it because it matches the subscribe button by clicking the little circle there or the red box below. I love you guys so, so much. Go watch this show and then I'll see you in the next one. The show is set in Sheffield, South York. <laughs> Somebody save me. 